Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Dalrin, and in today's video, I want to show you guys the Subtlety Rogue 1 Button Burst. It is not quite a one-button, one-shot macro, but it is pretty damn close. Subtlety Rogues, as of Battle for Azeroth, have had a lot more crowd control, but a lot less damage. And with how spec is so heavy on gear, a lot of people have been having a hard time trying to figure out how to burst as Subtlety Rogue. This macro will allow you to get the most amount of control out of the enemy and the most amount of damage out of the time you have the target stun locked. And this macro will help you guys learn how to properly execute Subtlety's burst as of Battle for Azeroth. This macro is more of an introductory macro for you guys to get to know what the burst is like so you can start playing with it, but it's a lot better to then eventually wean yourself off of the macro, learn what the separate abilities you gotta press during the burst so then you can adjust in case somebody trinkets or pops a defensive and you can perform better as a subtlety rogue. First of all, we gotta take a look at the prep work that's needed in order to make this macro work. Subtlety Rogues have always been a spec that's very gear dependent. So yes, this macro will work better if you have better subtlety focused gear. That means you will want to get as much mastery in your gear as possible. The more mastery you can put in from stats to gems to enchants, even your weapon enchants, the better your performance will be. When it comes to trinkets, I have two trinkets that make this burst work, and you will want some trinkets that increase your primary stats. One of these trinkets is a gladiator's badge, which allows me an on-use effect to gain a boatload of agility during my burst. Having an on-use agility trinket or an on-use stat trinket like versatility for example, is very important when you're trying to maximize the amount of burst you will have. This trinket has a lot of potency, but only for a short moment, but as subtlety rogues all we need is just one lineup for burst in order to deal the maximum amount of damage. For a second trinket, I would suggest like a proc based trinket. One that I have is Azeroth's Heart from a Mythic Plus dungeon. It gives me a fair amount of mastery, which is my perfect stat, as well as a proc for agility. When I get the proc for agility during my burst, which generally does happen on my first opener, and when I use the Onyus trinket together, the amount of agility both of those trinkets provide for a short moment is pretty intense and gives my burst a little bit extra of an oomph. Outside of that, when it comes to Azeroth gear and what traits you should want to run for this, I would run any trait that has a chance to grant you mastery. Mastery is pretty great for subtlety as mastery increases the damage of your finishers which you'll be using a lot of during this burst. Outside of that, there's only one trait that I think you guys must have in order to make this burst really work. The trait that you must absolutely have at least one of is the first dance. The first dance will grant you two common points whenever you use shadow dance, which will be necessary for the common point generation, but also grants you a fair amount of haste. Now haste is not the greatest stat for subtlety by any means necessary, but haste still does have effective values. Haste reduces the global cooldown of your abilities, which for subtlety during your short term burst, you want to get as much value and make sure that you have enough energy and GCD in order to get through all of your abilities. The boost of haste first dance provided you during burst lets you do that more smoothly. Haste also helps you with your energy regeneration, also for a smoother burst rotation, but also how fast you swing those daggers. The more dagger swings you can get during your burst, the more value you'll be able to get out of your burst damage as subtlety. Now, you only need to run one first dance at least. If you want to run two, it'll make your rotation feel smoother and you'll get slightly more auto attack swings and slightly better energy regen during your burst. But running at least one first dance is almost necessary. This macro accomplishes a couple things. It tries to, first of all, stun lock your enemy, not letting them go anywhere. An enemy without a trinket is a perfect target for a subtlety rogue out in battlegrounds or in arenas. And second, this burst tries to rotate your abilities as efficiently as possible in order to get as many eviscerates as you humanly can. The thought process behind the eviscerates is you're trying to get as many of them out as possible. With all the nerves that subtlety rogues have received in Battle for Azeroth, getting one beefy eviscerate sometimes is not worth it. What is easier to do to get the most value out of your damage is to go for as many eviscerates as possible. 
And if any of those eviscerates during your burst crit, that means you're simply gonna have a more effective value with your burst. So you're trying to throw out as many eviscerates, if any of them crit, your damage is gonna be higher, but even if none of them crit, you're still gonna put up a solid bit of damage on your enemy. Now when trying to perform this burst with subtlety, you are going to be putting yourself in kind of a vulnerable situation. Because you're trying to maximize the amount of value you get during your stunts, you're actually not going to open up with a cheap shot on the enemy. First you want to open up with a shadow strike to generate some combo points, then you want to nightblade the enemy to prepare them for the burst, then you want to shadow strike again so then you have at least 2 combo points before you start the burst. And then you get the meat and bones of the damage. You start the rotation off with a shadow dance which will generate 2 combo points from first dance and then cheap shot, now you have 5 full combo points for your first eviscerate. While you are cheap shotting, you want to activate your unused trinkets, your symbols of death, as well as your racial, if you're playing as an orc, let's say. Then you eviscerate the target, mark for death, eviscerate the target, shadow strike, cheap shot, and that should be the end of your first shadow dance. At the end of that shadow dance, you should have 5 calm points for an eviscerate, so you follow with an eviscerate. Then you pop dance, which will generate 2 free calm points. Cheap shot, so you should have 4, maybe 5 calm points if you're lucky, and then eviscerate the target. So through this burst, you're able to get a lot of value out of those eviscerates by getting 4 eviscerates total. If any of those eviscerates, while you are bursting for extra damage, crit, then the target is definitely going to die. What you could also do to make this burst even deadlier is to pop Shadow Blades before popping off with this burst. When you pop Shadow Blades, you actually don't want to change your rotation at all. You still want to get through all the same abilities, so if you want to make this as a one-button macro, and simply just pop Shadow Dance right before you go in for the burst, then you are more than welcome to. Now this type of burst is going to vary in mileage, depending on how good your personal gear is for your rogue. The more mastery you have, the better your trinkets are, the better your weapons are, the better this burst will be. But because we are in season 2 of BFA, we got a brand new raid, brand new PvP season, more stuff to do in Mythic Plus Dungeons, and overall the gear quality is going to be greater and higher. It should be possible for most of you guys to get enough gear in order to make this burst work. It all depends just how much effort you're willing to put into your character.
This burst is pretty great and is there for you guys to help you out so you can dive into some battlegrounds and arenas and start doing some damage as your subtlety rogues start forcing trinkets and cooldowns and everything out of your enemies. But what I'm hoping a lot of you guys do with this macro is you will look at it in more detail, you will watch the abilities that are used during this macro in order to get the most value out of it, and you'll learn all those rotations, all those abilities separately. So then you don't have to spam the one button macro to get your burst out, but rather you can execute those abilities separately. This macro is just to help you guys get started and start doing damage in Battlegrounds, but my hope is you guys will actually look at this macro in closer detail and you will learn the individual abilities. You will learn the individual rotations, overall helping you guys perform and become better as subtlety rogues. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below on the one button macro and if you want me to do one for other specs as well, let me know in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I do hope you enjoyed, and I'll see all of you guys in another one.